yes, if we let Russia's, uh, Americans come and do this, they'll fundamentally be unable to get any useful information, no matter what they do. Okay. And same thing with the, with the Americans. American is also have to say. So again, the third party is good. And I, physics cannot be hacked. Physics, physics cannot be hacked. Physics can be only understood. Maybe. Sometimes we don't. Uh, let me, I'll come to you. Any, any questions from anyone who has not asked questions? I didn't ask a question, though. That was then. That was a different time. Okay. All right. Tell me your question. No, can we use this as well to maybe uh, track where the so let's let's generalize it. Don't just keep it keep it to weapons. Generalize it to the nuclear facilities. So let's find out where the yellow cake is going. Let's find out where it's whether or not Ukraine really cleaned it up or whatever, right? Why not just take it to the next level? In fact, you can publish has, another paper. In out fact, of it. <laughs> in fact, that has already been done. Oh. So in the um, in the nineties there was lots of uh, worries about um, spent fuel as well as uh, fresh fuel materials in Kazakhstan being smuggled to different places, and Americans agreed agreed with Kazakh uh, leadership and I think there was something similar with Russians too, where they would do similar checks on the fuel material. I think it was fresh fuel, not spent fuel. Um, but the Kazakhs, the Russians, did not want all the information about the fuel to come out. They wanted to verify that it's this type of fuel, that type of fuel, things like that. That time they actually used information bearing. Despite everything I said, that information bearing is not entirely secure because they can be hacked. At that, that time, they felt that, uh, yeah, but you know, this is fuel, this is not bombs. So the uh, Kazakhs and Russians felt that even if something can be hacked, or even same thing Americans, it's not so critical. So information bearers turned out to be good enough. Uh, they did use information bearers. This is a non-technical aspect of the agreement where politics becomes quite quite important. Um, essentially, in fact, uh, the, the whole concept of using information barriers for weapons came from fuel uh, fuel analysis. Yeah, so this is this is very relevant. My question is about the I don't know if it was the time. Times, times, so what, what, what they really do is that they attenuate them quite a bit. Yeah. So they attenuate them. And you don't want them to attenuate too much otherwise you don't have any statistics left. Mm -hmm. Typically there's something like factor of 10 or something like that. So the coefficients are different. Yes, yes. I, I'm kind of not sure what is what is the result of that. Actually, if you have that spectra, the uh -huh. ones, so that material is inside. Right. Right. Well, if it is attenuated this much or that much, mm -hmm. what is the difference that much? It's, uh, uh, it's what is it tell, telling about that? Uh, what, what, it, what is important is this attenuation factors, two things about them. One of them is they are fixed, which is what allows you to do the comparison. For you a see. particular foil. For a particular foil, you keep the foil fixed. So every single energy line that I showed yeah. in this spectrum, they have essentially an attenuation factor associated with them, which is fixed. Mm -hmm. Second thing is that fixed, the fact that it's fixed allows you to do the comparison. If they were not fixed, this would be possible. Mm -hmm. sure. Second thing is that they're unknown to the inspectors. Which means that from them, if they knew what the attention factors are, they would yeah. work everything back. They would figure out what the weapons were. Yeah. But if they don't know it, then they cannot do this. My point is something different. If that uh, lines are a little bit uh, large or small or whatever, but still you have the spectrum. That's right. The spectrum tells about the material. Yes, 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 yes. You, you're absolutely right. Okay. So that's right. So from the spectrum, we can find out that in the foil, there is uranium. But those are, that's okay. What you do is that you agree that everyone knows the bomb has uranium, bomb has plutonium. Bomb has exploded. So the two sides agree that we're going to put a foil that will verify plutonium, uranium, explosives, or like So they get, get, see, a, see a spectrum where there's lines corresponding to uranium, plutonium, explosives, etc. And that's okay because they know that a priori. Yeah. So, yes, you, you, you are right. The, the just the energy positions of the, the peaks tells you what the material is made out of, but that's acceptable. That is acceptable. Yeah. So the coefficients may alter that much, and you cannot guess how much plutonium will be written. That's right. So, so that is the trick. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Okay. The other question, just probably my final question, it's uh, related to the self radiation. Yes. So, if, it, if there is, there's a container, there is a plutonium or uranium inside, whatever container it is, sure. can it really attenuate that much that you cannot? Or, or, or what is that uh, issue? Or you can put into your uh, backpack. It's, it's kind of funny a little bit. You, so, so, would you risk to do that? 
So, so this thing over here, right? So you're asking, is there enough attenuation here? That's what you're asking for. Yes. So yeah, so, so that's, so how big this material of this cone is, that I showed this range of ripples. First of all, it's not clear how this would happen in the early stage. My guess is that it would be probably not this warhead. This is actually, this is what it's called, it's called reentry beaker. These cones are the things that re-enter the atmosphere when it's during the final stage of the attack, right? But the actual bomb is a little thing inside this cone. So one way of doing this is that you can, again, this comes down to what will people consider to be agreeable. Ideally, you want to have just the core of the, the, the you know, the, 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 the explosive, you know, the nuclear explosive itself. Pull it out and compare them to each other, right? Um, you might be able to do it with the range of vehicles too. It depends how thick they are, which I don't know because it's highly classified. If it's too thick, you have, you, if it's... About, uh, oh, but those are, those are, those are, those are tactical warheads. Those are tactical weapons. So for the, for the, for the backpack, it's something that a human would carry. This is something you launch from 8,000 kilometers away. It needs this massive construction in order for it to be able not to burn in re entry so <laughs> Of course. I mean, you can make up for it by using a more intense source. You can have a higher current in your accelerators. You know, that's... But it's still, not they like are, still they are emitting some kind of radiation of course, can, of uh, suddenly detect No, you can't detect anything because there's all this shielding. There's like a tons of lead here. So if the gamma from here tries to come here, it's going to get stopped. It will never get to this. So detector cannot see any shielding. Really? 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 No. Uh, uh, two meters of concrete will stop everything coming out of the water. Yeah. I guess you build up the steel. You are not limited in how much you can put. You know, can put like meters and meters of shielding over here. When the warhead comes, yeah. it comes without any kind of concrete, right? You can yeah. immediately detect the radiation from it. Ah, no, no, no. But, well, okay, but that's just to take care. You make sure there's no detectors. Your detector is off, has no power. You put the, put the bomb over here. You can make sure there's a tunnel for the over here. That, 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 that's but you turn it on only when the bomb is over here, so you make sure that you don't measure it. That, that's, that's not a difficult problem. Okay. Okay. When the bomb is not here, the detector is off. You bring the bomb over here, you turn on the detector. The detector has no ability to measure anything from the bomb. That's it. So you are just not allowed to detectors close to the... Never. More questions? So maybe, uh, I mean, once again, uh, say thank you uh, for a very eye-opening and uh, interesting uh, talk that touches on a lot of, uh, as we found out, if we didn't already know, this is important for all of us, uh, wherever we live. So uh, thanks for taking the time and all the questions. Uh,